Hello, and welcome to another episode of Going Uptown with your host, Uptown Brown. And last episode, we talked about the Miss Marian Anderson and Friends Project. We're friends from my Oscar Michelle Family Theater Company program. We had Sister Monica Anderson, Spencer, Mark Forts, and Sky Forts. Well, during the end of that show, we, I said, introduced some of the characters of our production, but me, I was in a rush, and it was my first time doing a show. I forgot a couple of key members. I forgot um, Miss Claudia Stewart, who is playing Mary McLeod Bethune, and Gloria Fernandez, who is our narrator. Once again, I apologize for my mistake. Since that show, we have two additions. We have Sister Verdia Brown, who will be playing Ida B. Wells, as well as Reverend Tooks from, I mean, um, from, what's that, oh, Morningstar Baptist Church, who will be playing Miss Mary. And coming on next Friday, on April 2nd, I mean April 6th, at 6.30 at the Blackstone Community Theater, will be the Miss Mary and Anderson and Friends Project. Um, I think I do have a picture of the um, uh, flyer for that. Uh, I guess not, but. On Friday, April 6th at 6.30, we'll be at the Blackstone Community Center, and Saturday, April 7th at 2 p.m., a matinee show for the performance of the Miss Marian Anderson and Friends Project. Now, today, I am blessed to have with me as my guest, my cousin, Thunderful, oh, he, first of all, he's an ambassador of narcolepsy, cataplexa, and Caliplexi and indignous people worldwide. My cousin, Thunder Voice, O.C. Mequin. O.C. Mequin, Half Kenny. Welcome to Going Uptown. Thank you. Thank you, cuz. I appreciate it. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, now, let's talk about your earlier roots. You know, because me and you have some upbringing in this BNN. That's right. That's right. Um, now, growing up as a kid, you know, we had our Uncle Freddie. Uncle yeah. Freddie Washington, yep. who showed us the ropes with the cameras. You want to explain your experience with the being in center? Sure, monumental. Um, as I can say, uh, Uncle Freddie, Freddie Washington, he would bring me down to being in, down there. Uh, you know, when we're down there at the um, the mall, uh, off of uh, what's the what's that? Uh, Molina Cast is that Molina Cast? Molina yeah. Cast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Martin Luther King Boulevard. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yes. It was amazing because uh, when he took me in there, like like you can see, um, he showed me how to do the credits. That was one mm -hmm. of his um, big things was doing the credits and, and things like that and putting like designs in certain you know colors and things like this. He was just showing me all of this and it was amazing to see you know what he could do you know and it made TV. You know, yes, he did. He, so. made, he always made good TV because I remember when he was living on Seaver Street too. We would go over to his house, right? And he have camera equipment all over the place, tapes, and tapes, cassettes. and cassettes, audio, and yeah. cameras, and all that type of stuff. And he would always teach us how to use them, right. you know, because Uncle Freddie. That's one thing about him. He was always a teacher. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He, he could speak, man. He could speak. That's he one thing you about <laughs> our family. We're good speakers, you oh, know. Yeah. Oh yeah, speaking about family, um, where did you grow up at? So, um, I was born in um, Brigham and Women's, Roxbury, you know, um, grew up basically at a young age. Well, um, I like to give a um, shout out to my mother, my father, you know, um, Susan K. Washington, um, David R. Halfkenny, and uh, about at the age of three, I want to say, me and my mom, we moved down to Texas. So mm -hmm. that was a pretty a long um, voyage. But I kind of grew up there from three to like 11. So I used to live there, but I would always come back home mm -hmm. in the summer times and, you know, in other times. So it was um, best of both worlds, basically. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, Texas is country, mm -hmm. you know? 
Boston is city, so it was like a city country type of thing. And um, it was amazing. I mean, w well, music was the greatest influence in my life, you know what I'm saying, that gave me a balance. So I would, from three to about, like I said, 11, I was going through uh, singing kind of there in um, academies, like a, like a school. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, doing like little plays and little shows and stuff like that. So that was the first thing that kind of introduced me into um, the stage okay. front. So I, I went through that. And when I would come back home, the most important thing about that was um, my brother. And I have my brother here. He's uh, recently passed. His name is uh, Maurice Boyd. And uh, my brother Mo, you know, he used to show me like, dance moves, dance steps, yeah. and uh, harmonizations and certain things like that. Mostly dance steps and vocals because he had a group. Okay. So the history on it was, like my dad had a group, he's from OP, mm -hmm. um, and he, he had an arm, uh, oh, I guess you could call it R&B, &B. you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's kind of like Temptations type of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Five guy groups and stuff like that, six guys and whatever. But he had a group like this, and then uh, um, I guess New Edition had their group, mm -hmm. and then my brother had a group. Um, it's just so sad that um, one of the members had passed away. His name was Ronnie, yeah. but he had passed away. He was from Warren Gardens. And um, that was just me being able to sit there and watch that. Uh -huh. You know, right there in my face, you know, Maurice Starr and stuff knocking on the door and people coming in and certain things like that at our house. And with rehearsals, I was able to see that, you know. Yeah. And so, you know. Um, so that pretty much inspired you yeah, to it, do that. So. It inspired me yes. um, to, to do that. But growing up, that was kind of like from 11. So then when it goes on, you know, um, I'm basically my group comes after that so okay and how old was you when that started happening well when that happened now i had to be about 14 because i was going to madison park that was my okay. freshman year and uh my group was called first love that was the first r&b group that i had it's called first love yes yes and um that was brandy um montesaw lamine montesaw my my man markley um bill and um me you know, okay. so it was a really nice, it was a nice group. Now, what, I can go on for days. Yeah, what, what type of genre music was you singing? It was R&B. Oh, uh, r &B. It was R&B. I remember um, we did a, a, a couple of talent shows at Madison Park, um, you know, and like I said, um, we came here to BNN. It was, a, it was dope because mm -hmm. we came here to BNN for a Christmas uh, show okay. that I believe Mr. Shine had put on. Am I right on that? Professor Shine. Professor um, Shine? Yeah, Professor Shine. He used to work for um, Madison Park and BNN. So he kind of brought us in and we did uh, some songs on there. I, I want to pull that footage up if we can pull that. I can't you know? pull it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you also have another passion too, like yes. growing up. In, can you explain about that? Basketball, right? Is, I'm correct. Right on, right on. Um, basketball, of course. So, you know, yeah, our, our, our era is a really good era because you had, at that time, um, some bad guys out there. Mac mm -hmm. Michael Jordan, of course. <laughs> you know, you had um, Magic Johnson. You had all, all of that dream team. That, that, Charles Barkley. Yeah, Charles <laughs> Barkley. That's what they used to call me in high school. Mm -hmm. A lot Same of cats me. that... Um, it was influential, so once I got into basketball up here, I want to give a shout out to um, um, Coach Smooth, um, Greg Simpson. He was my coach uh, mm -hmm. for um, basketball for a good little while. We had a really good team. We went around the whole New England uh, region and, and winning. You know, we won. We won everywhere we went. Now, the reason why I brought up basketball is because I want you to tell us what you're doing now with basketball. Right on. Um, right now, you know, um, I'm grateful that um, I've been made the head coach of AAU, um, which is Junior NBA, out there in Uxbridge. You okay. know, that's the Junior NBA out there in Uxbridge. Okay. And uh, for the seventh grade uh, boys. 
And before I, you know, we go into our first break, tell us how did you um, became an AAU coach. Okay, well, um, just, um, you know, being out there um, and watching certain games and, um, you know, um, I got a son, Joseph, uh, Joseph Ramirez. Shout out to uh, Lisa Terry, Joseph Ramirez. Mm -hmm. um, boy is a phenomenal athlete and so there was a couple of tournaments going on out there and I said hey you need to be over there you know playing over there and um, so I talked to the coach and all and so it ends up that uh, a couple a couple of times the coach never showed up or something and I said uh, let me just go ahead and fill in and you know coach the team so I, I coached the team we won a um, couple games we lost one but that just showed me that I had the coaching skills in me, and um, I actually coaches, uh, coached the Narragansett youth, and they actually won the championship. So. Good stuff, cuz, good stuff. Well, this is Tyree going uptown with my guest for today, Mr. Thunder Voice, and we will be back right after this um, quick break. Right on. Mm -hmm. back to going uptown with uptown brown and i'm in today with my guest thunder voice also meek win half kenny now mr thunder voice how did you come up with that name thunder voice also meek win okay well thunder voice was uh so um there was a lot of um activism that was going on at a certain point in time mm -hmm. and Another cousin of ours, um, Wampa Mequin Wampa Tuck, um, also known as Larry Fisher, um, we all, it was me, him, and then we had uh, two others, which was uh, Jonathan and um, Kabir. And we, we come to reform a drum group mm -hmm. at RCC. So we wanted to bring the culture and the traditions back to the community. So we, we, we did that, and that was the start of Club Hope. So if you ever know, you know Club Hope Inc. Mm -hmm. or something now, it's pretty big now. But um, we were the ones that basically were with the team that started, you know, making that a, a big thing to uh, be an outlet for um, what um, I think is, I can't remember names, but I know that um, one of, one of our other cousins on uh, another side of the family, his last name is Wiggins, okay. but he passed away. And so that was something that was, we, we kept that going and stuff because there was a, um, you know, a vision. And then when we came along, we said, of course, but we want to bring in the culture. Okay. So the Thunder Voice, you know, it came from, you know, a gathering and that's how we felt about it, it was Thunder Voice. Also, Mequa means yellow feather mm -hmm. and there's a, um, a story with me um, with how I obtained um, the Yellow Feather um, name is because I was thinking of what would, what would be a good name that would um, explain the things that I go through and, mm -hmm. and the type of person that I am. And um, it's a fighter, you know, yeah. I'm a fighter. And um, because uh, as we get into it, you'll know yeah. why. Yes, sir. But there was a yellow, uh, the actual bird, um, 
it was a yellow um, bird, the bird of the Osamequin. Uh -huh. I didn't know this when this happened, but we spoke it into existence and Creator like brought this bird right in front of me. It was dead, mind you, on the ground, but that day I spoke about it and mm -hmm. then I was, I was conscious enough to be aware to know there's my bird for, um, you know, and, and it was a confirmation on the name, you okay. know what I mean? So I included that with, and that was a spiritual thing. So yeah. that wasn't somebody um, naming, no. it was creator basically naming <clears throat> me and, and showing me, no, um, check this out because this is actually in your family, it's, you know, in, in your family and stuff like that. So I have a question about the family. What made you interested in going back into your genealogy? To the roots, because yeah. I wanted to, um, because we always knew that we were um, American Indian, mm -hmm. but just not, I just didn't, for myself, know the paper trace, you know, the okay. paper trail. I wanted to know more, you know, it's like, you want to know more, you want to know how far it goes back, you want to know um, why do you do certain things, you know, in your character, you know, why is it easier for you to do these things, you know, and that's basically, you know, what led me mm -hmm. to, to doing that because it's very important that we know who we are because we deal with certain things on a daily basis. So if we're able to have that information, then we're easier to get through obstacles or anything that comes your way. That's true. That's true because we're from gifted people. Right. And then, you know, once we find that out, you know, that brings a self pride in ourselves and right. saying, you know, we could accomplish anything. Right. You know, because I remember, like we was talking about before, when we did our genealogy, yeah. like a couple of years back, you know, we found our family came from Cape Verde. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. deep down in Africa, and it's just like, wow. You know, my family yeah. actually came from Cape Verde. And yeah, yeah. And it's powerful. Um, Very. So, how did you become part of your tribe? Like, can you describe that process? Okay, uh, well, uh, most as most um, tribes would have a council, mm -hmm. you know, like a tribal council. So you would just want to get with um, the certain members of the tribal council to um, enroll and list. Or you'll just already be there. Your family will be there. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're not there because at that time that they took the census or, you know, the, the, the information down, you weren't even uh, alive. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to go back a... a some years, you know, gen gen generations mm -hmm. back, and then check out the um, the paper check, you know, the paper trail. Check out the history on who you are and where you came from, whose you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you came from. And I, and I see that you have a couple of stuff with you. Right, um, right. Can you right. explain to okay. my audience what you have? Right on. So I've got um, a war club. So basically, um, when you get into, you know, your heritage, culture, you start to um, do, you know, certain things that you're um, interested in. Mm -hmm. Some people are interested in making uh, regalia. Some people are interested in taking on dance mm -hmm. of the culture. Some people are interested in singing, you know, drumming and certain things like that. And what I have here is um, a war club. This is actually like a dance stick that I um, dance with. And it's um, more of a, like a horse. Uh, if you can see that, you know, a horse, you know, spirit, because when you, you're thinking about, you know, being on a horse or something, or, you know, you just have your own style or whatnot, but this is my own craft. Every individual person is different. This is just my own individual, you know, artifact that I made, and uh, maybe I could pass it down to, you know, um, somebody that'll dance with it, right, you know? Okay. And what do you have on your waist? Oh, so I brought um, um, one of the nice medicine bag that I made, which is um, out of beaver. And uh, let me see if I could take it off. Can you get that? Yeah. It's on there pretty nice. But this is made of beaver, you know, and you just have your um, traditional medicines, which would be some sage, tobacco, maybe a connect connect type of um, mix or whatnot, just to um, really like hold that, you know? And it's sacred because um, 
I'm also Canadian Indian, okay? Mm -hmm. So we know that our roots go up in Canada. Canada too, yeah. And that's probably where it crossed over to yes. go into um, the Cape Verde yep. and all. So up there, the actual seal is a beaver biting birch bark. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty um, amazing because when you think about medicines and birch tree, Mm -hmm. Black birch, white birch, whatever trees and certain things were made for medicines and then the beaver biting that, you know, and then you uh, capturing a beaver and, you know, having that. That's all medicine. It's all good medicine. All so good medicine. this is pretty amazing. Pretty dope. Now I have a question now. What, because a lot of people be calling you like American Indians, uh, Native Americans. What is the proper term for to be called. Well, I would say American Indian. American Indian. You know, but I would even go a little even further to just say indigenous mm -hmm. because or aborigine because we're the aborigine just like uh, aborigine from Australia, right? Yeah. They are in Australia. We're like the aborigine of America. Okay. You know, or, you know, because there's all places of the world, but when we do our trace, it's staying mostly here, you know, yes. and then probably with a couple voyages or whatnot. But that doesn't mean that you didn't get on that boat and go, go that, that way, way. Yeah. and you know what I mean, and come back. Or it's just a lot going on when it comes down and talking about um, boats and mm -hmm. travel. You know what I mean? Because the waterways is the highways that we used. Yes. You know, so that's that's a lot when we're talking about that. It is a lot. It definitely is a lot. Um, so, you know, ex the Indian, because I want to go back to the artifacts. Okay. Now, what is the Indian Arts and Crafts Act of 1990? Do you know what that's about? Like how to make your artifact, like be, an artist must be enrolled as a member of a tribe to have that stuff recognized, right? Right, right. Well, I'm not really worried. I'm not too concerned, you know, with that too much, you know what I mean? Um, I think that uh, as people, mm -hmm. I, I don't really like to be all um, sophisticated or uh, politically correct when it comes down to certain things because it's just, it just doesn't really, <laughs> you know what I mean? But when it comes down to this, well, we'll say this is an artifact. So if this, if this was found, if I, you know, threw it in the back of auntie's, you know, thing and somebody found this, this would be considered an artifact if right. it was, what, a thousand years from now, right? Mm -hmm. And they would be trying to find out, you know, who made this and this and that. And, but if I wasn't known, would it be an artifact? That's true. So there's all type of stuff that could, you know what I mean? It's just about who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. We have culture, traditions, customs, and we just need to, you know, stay firm on them so that we keep them going on in generations. So that, you know, something like this is uh, honored and respected. It would be in our, in our family, but abroad would it be? Because do they even know of us, you know? You know? Now so. talk Okay, now going back to ownership of land. Now, like, you know, you was here first, you know? Right, right. And, you know, the Europeans came over, stole the land and stuff like that. Now, a lot of people have legal claims to their lands. How can they get, you know, get that legal claim well, back? Well, uh, I mean, I, I would think that that would have to do with, like, deeds and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Get more of a... Uh, you know, it's you can do your research yeah. on your own. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to do your own research, you know. And it's like, it's really deep with that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because so many things have been done over the years. But if you can find your deeds of certain uh, plots and lands and things like that, definitely, you you know, you can, uh, there's a way to go about it. You know what I mean? I, I, I wouldn't be able to uh, expound upon that with just one uh, show. <laughs> That's how deep it is, you know what I mean? You gotta have lawyers and all type of certain stuff, but if you research, uh -huh. you know what I mean? You should have the deeds and certain things to certain lands and things like that, and there's ways to make something happen, make it happen. Make it happen. You know? Like, yeah. like the um, clip that, you, that we were showing just yeah. a bit ago, that was um, 
Patumtuck. That was the march for Patumtuck, which is Poconoket land. Okay. Okay. Um, that Brown University, you know, was basically um, having uh, classes at and certain stuff like mm -hmm. that. So basically just honoring the people that were of this land, which is the Poconoket, which is who we are as well. You know, we're, 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 we're a lot of different nations, which is Poconoket, um, Canadian, um, Indian, which is Mi'kmaq, um, up there, it's, it's uh, Fort Folly, it's up there in uh, Nova Scotia, uh, Dorchester, New Brunswick, in those Mock Town areas and stuff. Yeah. And um, that's the half Kenny side of uh, um, me. And also on the Brown side as well, mm -hmm. which goes up into the Joneses and certain things like that. Yes, sir. Um, which goes all the way back down into North Carolina, um, Kentucky, yeah. and all these type of things, which is the Neuia, um, those certain tribes. So. We, 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 you know. Well, I don't know. Well, we just, you just finished talking about one of the values you had, but yes. when we come back yes. from this break, we're going to talk about something else that you was very involved with at the right. beginning of the 20th million, I mean, 20th anniversary of the Million wow. Man March. Right on, right so on. So we're yeah. going to take a little break and we'll be right back. All right, right on. Today's spotlight is on Speaking About. I'm Haywood Fennell, host of Speaking About, where we encourage cultural values and performance with the Oscar Michelle Family Theater Program. Tune in. Peace and blessings. I'm Charles Clemens Muhammad, your host of Touch TV, the fabric of the black community. Unbossed, uncompromised news from the black perspective. Today's spotlight is on Going Uptown with Tyree Brown. Yeah, this is Uptown Brown on WBCA Radio 102.9 FM, host of Going Uptown with Uptown Brown. Tune in on WBCARadio.org for my time and schedule. Hey, hope to hear from you soon. And we're back to Going Uptown with Uptown Brown, and this is your host, Tyree Brown. I'm here with Thunder Voice, also Me Quinn, Half Kenny, and we're talking about the Million Man March now, the 20th anniversary yeah. of the Million Man March. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, before we go back into that, you know, our family has a real history with the minister, yes. Louis Farrakhan. Can you right. explain about that? Well, from what I know, and before I ever met the minister, um, I talked to my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather, Donald B. Washington Sr. God rest his soul. Um, definitely um, powerful guy, powerful man, man of few words with me, you know, and um, I really didn't get as much as I, uh, maybe I probably should have to know. I didn't know the questions to ask, see? Mm -hmm. When you don't know the questions to ask, you don't get that, that nitty gritty stuff. But what you do get is some of the hardcore foundation things to let you know that you're a monumental person and um, we come from monumental people. So yeah. when it, what happens is um, he basically just, you know, um, taught me a couple, you know, uh, strong um, things to go by, you know, um, being firm and, you know, with your voice, meaning what you say, saying what, what you, you mean, yes. you know, um, and, um, it goes over into my grandmother, Ruth Kathleen Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, now, she was a tailor, but she's Gordon now. And um, she started speaking about, you know, the minister and certain things like that. And so when this came about, I give her a call and, uh, you know, she they all grew up together. So that's the thing. Um, the minister um, and my grandparents, they all grew up together, as our grandparents, they all grew up together. Grew so up. Yeah. 
um, I just let her know that this is something that was going on to bring the red and the black together, which was like a native thing in a African yeah. culture to come together or whatnot. Okay. And um, that was what it was. That's what it was. The now, reuniting. We have the clip coming up where you participated in the 20th anniversary. Right Let's on. see that. Let's check it out. Yes. We're back, and this is Going Uptown with Uptown Brown, and I'm here with Thunder Voice, also Meek Gwen, Half Kenny. And um, we just saw the clip of the um, rally of the million man, 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. Yeah. Now, um, Thunder Voice, what was your role in that um, rally? Because I just saw you in that video. Right, right. So the role was basically to represent um, and just do what I did. Um, the brother that was in the red, his name was Brother Hector, um, and he was the um, he was the master of ceremony. Mm -hmm. And um, I was I'm usually firekeeper when I do like sweats and certain things like that. I usually do firekeeping, so I was the firekeeper for the Capitol grounds of the um, the sacred circle that we had on the Capitol grounds. So okay. I kept the fire, you know, going and. Uh, it was a lot of monumental moments um, at that time because, um, of course, the government is gonna try to like shut it down or whatever. But why? Why? You know. So, anyways, we didn't we didn't allow you know um, it to be shut down like that. Mm -hmm. And um, once the uh, elders came, it was very very um, spiritual, very monumental because. When uh, some of the elders came, one was um, Elder Ernie Longwalker, mm -hmm. and um, warrior woman, um, very, very beautiful, beautiful, um, the way that they, you know, carry themselves, handle, they show you the traditional certain things, and they speak up, and, and um, it gives you that voice, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, it's what we need to hear on a daily basis, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And um, so basically, at that moment, they all stopped with the uh, trying to interrupt anything. The, the government, yeah. what I'm talking about. Yes. They stopped trying to interrupt anything about the ceremony at that moment in time once the elders showed up. And it was beautiful um, having that time there with them to bring three million 
together, you know what I mean? And to be able to sing the healing chants for the people, you know what I mean? It was everything that uh, my grandfather spoke about, you know, just those, those big shoes to fill or, or those important things to do in life, you know. I've always been preparing myself and that was actually a time that I was able to come forth like I, I was made to do, you know. And you, and you served your purpose because, Thank you. Thank you. you know, over three million people at that march. Yeah. And not one incident. Not one incident. Not one incident. So, I mean, you got a lot of things going on, but we need to do that, I think, more, mm -hmm. you know, because it raises the vibration, you know, of our world. You it know, does. it raises the vibration. When the people come together like that, it raises the vibration. It makes people consciously aware of certain things, brings people to... Um, network with each other, work with each other uh, a little more. It was, and another monumental thing, right after we did that, yes. um, m my cousin Wampa Mequin Wampa Tuck and I um, attended the um, gathering of all the, um, the Black Lives Matter, um, mm -hmm. the victims, you know, uh, the Mike Brown and, um, yeah all the ones that were slain by the, I don't know if you would say the government, but it's people in uniform, you know yes. what I mean? Police officers and certain things like that. Um, we actually got to then meet with the families, which was um, great, and sing hill and chants to them as well. Wow. So that was to all the mothers and the fathers of those that had you know, lost, a, you know, one of these loved ones. I know you were the lead singer, too, because you have such a beautiful voice. Right, right. Do you, know, you mind doing a little acapella for us? No, right I quick? don't. I don't. Um, actually, um, I'll do a little, um, like, a first verse of a song that I call Native Woman. Mm -hmm. And this song, um, the beats and everything was made by Justin Betty, and he is um, Native as well. And it was a, a very fortunate because um, one of the people from Oregon, like a radio station, wanted to air it and, and play it. And I was honored, you know what I mean? I'm always honored. So um, look for that. You can look at it on YouTube or I think you're no, going to play gonna, it. No, we're going to play right, it pretty cool, soon. Cool. So I'll just sing a little bit acapella just to give you a little taste of it. Okay. Okay. I'm a vortex traveler, aligned with galactic sources. Not worrying about no BS or no static, handle that automatic. I travel the grid, that's just what it is. My energy way too powerful to gravitate to the negative. You can feel me in the vortex when I enter in the circle. So, beautiful, it goes beautiful, there, beautiful, you know beautiful. what I'm saying? And I can't wait to see that video. This is Going Uptown with Uptown Brown with my guest for today, Thunder Voice, also Mequin Halfkenny. That's right, that's right. And if you want to be a guest on Going Uptown, you can email me at tbrowne2014 at yahoo.com. Or you can request me at Facebook. And also, remember, at the Blackstone Community Center on April 6th at 6.30 and April 7th at 2 p.m., the Miss Marian Anderson and Friends Project will be hosting their show. Um, so going back to you, my brother. Right on, my right cousin. on. So, oh, man, that song was so beautiful, and I can't wait to see that video. Thanks, thanks. And um, so what's next on your agenda? Basically, what's next on my agenda is that I, I have um, been selected to um, be on a panel mm -hmm. for um, um, advisory board for narcolepsy. So basically, I want to... Um, we talk about the narcolepsy. Yeah, okay. So, so, so basically, with, with that's tribe, what's... With your tribe. My tribe, um, like I said, is uh, Poconoke, mm -hmm. um, Mi'kmaq, um, Annie Yumwia, which is um, Real People of North Carolina, um, and yes, uh, these things are um, very important for you as an individual 
to find out and research for yourself so that your children's children and children and generations on will know who they are so they're not out there, you know, just looking to get into anything because they have no uh, honor or value with themselves, you know? Got you. And um, we are about to see the video, Native Woman by Thunder Voice. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about another passion that Thunder Voice has. So, see you soon. All right. Way up, way high, way up. I'm a vortex traveler, aligned with galactic sources. Don't worry about no BS or no static, can't know that automatic. I travel the grid, that's just what it is. My energy way too powerful to gravitate to the negative. You gon' feel me in the vortex when I enter in the circle. Meditation and passionate sexual healing is just so amazing. Can you feel me, my? I'm talking to you, my, my native, my native woman. Ooh, I'm sending out a message to you with my love. Shower down on me like, like the star you are. Cause you're my. Education with that B word Knows how to handle a business Intuition, got that knows what it is next And I'm a pipe carrier like a daddy She's so ceremonial See that's our life But later on tonight Shorty gon' ride on my saddle And she tryna win a medal And then ride on my ladder Cause when it's cold and lonely down and now She knows how to make me feel better And she's my native Talking to you, my, my native, my native woman. Ooh, I'm sending out a message to you with my love. Like the star you are, cause you're my native woman. And we're, and we're back. 
And that was Native Woman by Thunder Voice, also Me Quinn, Half Kenny. And we used to talk about um, Thunder Voice has another passion. And what's that passion that we, you have for? Well, I have a passion of raising the awareness mm -hmm. of narcolepsy with cataplexy. Okay. Now, what is that for well, those who don't know? Okay, for those that don't know, narcolepsy with cataplexy would be an invisible disease or you could say disorder or disease, but it's an invisible um, situation where um, one is easily, chronically fatigued, um, has uh, situations where memory loss is um, present, um, and it's just a lot of little symptoms. So. Basically, knowing what you're looking for um, is, is something that I would like to, like, I got to raise the awareness because this happens and it comes about in its uh, most urgent stages of, like, um, 13, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, when you're turning into, you know, teenager area. So you want to check out um, what your son or daughter um, there, you know, um, is. yeah, it's basically you want to monitor your son and your daughter by the way that they're acting. If they're more tired and they're more, you know, fatigued, it's yes. a chronic fatigue thing. Chronic fatigue. All right, so we have a video on narcolepsy that we're going to take a break and take a look at. All right, right on. So, see you in a few. 200,000 Americans and 3 million people worldwide have narcolepsy and autoimmune neurological sleep disorder, affecting 1 in 2,000 people. Many doctors are unfamiliar with narcolepsy, therefore many people suffering with narcolepsy are either underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Wake Up Narcolepsy is a nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting narcolepsy awareness and research to find a cure. Founded in 2008, Wake Up Narcolepsy has quickly become a national leader for narcolepsy research and awareness. It's dedicated to funding research into the causes, prevention, treatments, and a cure for narcolepsy while increasing awareness in the public. Wake Up Narcolepsy is committed to advancing research and encourages people with narcolepsy and their families to participate in research studies and clinical trials. Visit wakeupnarcolepsy.org to learn more about symptoms, donate, or get involved. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Narcolepsy, huh? Yeah. So what are some of the symptoms for that? Oh, um, like I said, chronic fatigue. Like, I mean, you can get a full night's rest, mm -hmm. but you still feel exhausted, you know what I mean, within, you know, like 15 minutes. But the thing is, every individual has a different diagnosis. So it could be really, really strong on one person where they're just nodding off and just falling asleep, mm -hmm. or it could be like, I have it to where um, I can feel it mm -hmm. coming up about to where I know that, okay, I need to go sit down because I'm going to be chronically fatigued and things are going to start happening. I'm going to get real tired. I'm going to doze off for a nap. Now, is there any medication involved yeah, with that? Yeah, so too? medication that usually is prescribed, which I'm prescribed with, is um, Provigil, mm -hmm. or they call it Modafinil. And um, it's it, that's why I can do what I'm doing, you know, um, talk talk as long as we need to for this show. But I'm knowing that with these lights, see, because what people don't understand, so with the lights itself, I'm feeling something up here. You know what I mean? It's like a strain on my neurological system. So it's a neurological situation what we're dealing with. But um, there's little things that you can do as a narcoleptic, um, like, you know, pinching yourself, having a rubber band, those type mm -hmm. of things. But um, if you, you know, diagnose, um, most likely you're going to be prescribed a drug, which is Provigil, New Vigil, or, you know, Modafinil and stuff like that. So Now, would drinking a Red Bull or like an energy drink help uh, with the situation? Energy drinks, they're all right, but it's going to fizzle out. You know, it's going to fizzle, it's gonna out, fizzle yeah. out, you know what I mean? Because 
Yeah, that's not strong enough. An <laughs> energy drink, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I think that um, meditation, what helps me is mm -hmm. meditation. You must stay active to not be fatigued, you know, because um, if you're too dormant, like just resting, like if I didn't take any medication and if I was just here like this, I'd be nodding off. Mm -hmm. I'd be dozing off uncontrollably, not, not even trying. But um, it's just very important to do these type of evaluations, a sleep study test. If you have a, a child that is, um, you're, you're, you're seeing that they're more fatigued and, and, and sleepy or tired, then I would advise that you would give them a um, sleep study test to check their neurological system because they might be a narcoleptic with cataplexy. Now, they could be just a narcoleptic by themselves, but most, like 70% of narcoleptics have narcolepsy with cataplexy. And cataplexy is the part where um, your limbs, you know, your muscle tones, they just kind of relax on their own. So that's, you don't see me taking too many sips of this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? All because I might drop it, I don't know. Right. So I want to just take a little quick sip. I don't want to be holding it in my hand or something like that. But the thing is, you know, um, it's a heightened emotion. So heightened emotions. Now, that could be auntie's great food that she cooks in. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to take a um, thing, a, a, a bite of food, and maybe your head does a dip like that. Mm -hmm. That's a heightened emotion that you're feeling because the food smells so good, mm -hmm. you're about to take a bite. It's a neurological thing. You're talking about motor skills. Okay. And um, some kind of disconnection with motor skills and doing all of that, and your muscle tone starts to give way. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to describe this, and that's why um, being, you know, the ambassador and, and, and being able to do the research as the narcoleptic, you know, is important because there's a lot of doctors and things, but they don't have narcolepsy. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. They only know what research tells them and things like that. Now, I'm able to then be the narcoleptic and do the research and certain things like this. So when I feel a certain way and when they show me data and research, I can say, well, okay, I felt like this in this. Got you. you so what is next for Thunder Voice? Because we're about to have to show right up. Right on, right so on. So what is next for Thunder Voice? So basically what's next for me, I just want to focus on being the spokesman and ambassador for narcolepsy with cataplexy and raising the awareness there because it's very important for indigenous people worldwide. You know, this is um, my focus on to be uh, indigenous people worldwide because there's a lot of um, issues in that. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's all trauma, it's trauma, a lot of trauma there. You know what I mean? So it's very important that we have voices and people that can speak for people in my situation because there's hope, there's, you know, everything. It, you're not the only person with this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and you got to understand that there is a way to have a normal life because I'm just dealing, dealing with that. A narcoleptic is dealing with trying to have a normal life. You can't keep a job. You look like you're able to do a job or whatever, but once you get that job, you have to perform that job. And to be able to perform that job is to be able to be 100%, and a narcoleptic is not feeling 100%, even on prescription drugs. Well, thank you, Cousin thank you. Thunder thank Voice, you. also Lee Gwynn, yes, Hap Kenny, for coming on, going uptown with Uptown Brown. Right on. And next week, I mean, next, not next week, next time we will be going uptown, we will have my friends from the Oscar Michaud Family Theater Program Company back on again. I would like to thank the um, crew for working the show. I'd like to thank my cousin once again for coming on. And I'd like to thank you, most of all, for watching. Going Uptown with Uptown Brown. See you next time.